And I go to the, the Marine office, I'm like, hello, anybody in here? And then this guy like crawls up from underneath the desk, he's like, oh, you're here to join the Marines? And I was like, dude, this is my place. <laughs> I thought this would be a really interesting question to answer, uh, since we're off the record. Right? <laughs> Currently yeah. off of the record. Um, and it would be an interesting answer for Bart to hear from all of us. The question is, why didn't you join the military? Oh, oh why, I why, was. Why, why, why would it, why would it be interesting for me? Because you actually did. You, did you ever have a dream? Because I have a big fat fucking mouth, that's why. I, I don't think I could handle somebody telling me what to do for a You're from a military family, exactly. right? Exactly. Wait, are all your siblings military? Your sister too? Well, my sister's not. But she is hot. She was too hot to join. She would have served them too good. Yeah. Too hot to join? Yeah, yeah, they wouldn't let her. How many brothers you got? I got two brothers and an older sister. So no but uh, all your but all your uh, but relatives hot. are military. Too? Every single one. And the wow. reason, like, they never pressured you to join or enlist? never. No. Do they all sit around and make fun of you? Like you're like the non-military. Nah, one? they know not to because I'll hit them back ten times harder. <laughs> They're like you're just. And I'll go. Smart. And I'll go personal. Do you think that's what made you funny? Because <laughs> uh, he was the non-military yeah, one. Yeah, the non-military guy. I think it was more just like attention, right? Because like you're, I'm in a big family, like four kids. You have to like fight for every like bit of moment in the sun. You're like, it's like those plants at the at the jungle floor. Like you got to really work to like get to the light. Uh, I think that was what it was. When did you have the? For sure, I'm not gonna do it. Was it like in high school, earlier, or like? I remember making my girlfriend at the time cry because I was like, I'm probably gonna get out of the military. I don't fucking know. Cause like she I cried. Yeah, she was like crying about cause cause this was like around Afghanistan, but I was fucking pissed. I was like, I'm gonna go kill some Taliban's. Dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was, but I was calling them worse things than that, racial epithets. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, uh, but I was, I remember just thinking like, I'm probably gonna have to join because of all the things going on, like with Iraq and stuff like that. But then, um, as it got closer and closer to the reality of that, like I was like, yeah, I don't know that I could actually do it. Like I, I don't know that I can actually. Like, be good at it because I'm really bad at respecting anybody telling me what like the fuck to do. Like authority Yeah, oh. I'm really bad at it. I knew about um, Al Qaeda before mainstream America knew about Al Qaeda. What? Yeah, I, I had a book before in before 1993. And then the crazy thing is, these two Taliban guys start taking each other's robes off, <laughs> and they're sucking each other's cocks. <laughs> I was watching this video about it. They're sucking each other. Like, Somebody has to stop these guys. <laughs> I was in about. <laughs> I was like eight, eighth or ninth grade. Eighth or ninth grade, right? I had a book called 21st Century uh, Terrorism. Because in junior high, I just had this. Like, okay, I think in elementary school, right? Probably most people's first, like, introduction to being a soldier or whatever was G.I. Joe. I think G.I. Joe was oh, a like lot the cartoons. Of boys. First, like real American hero exposure to like soldier romanticism. Like I want to fucking be in the army. That's what boys do. That's what men do, right? And then you have the little green army men that you would play with your friends and stuff. And then you get like the machine guns and you have water fights. And then you're just like good guys, bad guys, right? And then you obsess about this stuff and you like think one day I'm gonna be a fucking soldier. And you get like camel fatigues. You dress like a soldier during Halloween, and then like I believe that I was gonna be somewhat military. And then I started picking up books, magazine, and I was like, wow, like I learned about a uh, soldier of for fortune and mercenary groups that you can like get military training outside of just join the military. Fast forward to like reading about uh, 21st century terrorism. They, they were talking about how like US like people that want to be uh, private contractors, they can go to Taliban camps and get training outside of the US. Cause then if you're like secret secret, then you can basically like learn all these like skills without being a part of the military program in the US. And I was like, that's fucking crazy. And then when I deep dived into everything, I was like, everything is kind of the same. Like countries all just have soldiers that do what the country wants them to do. So then there's no good guy, bad guy. Everyone's just power like hungry. And then at that point I was like, fuck. Well, does that mean my country is a good country 
but is it really good though? And then that's like, cause in high school, you just start reading all these things about like, wait, the CIA was selling drugs to like the black community and using that money to buy soldiers in Costa Rica or whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck is all this stuff? And I think that was scaring me to the point where I'm like, who do I trust? And if I join the military, does that mean that I'm gonna be used or I don't know? And that scared the fuck out of me. Like at that point I was like, why even be a part of society if everything is a lie? Versus just talking to a recruiter. <laughs> Well, how would the recruiter know? Everyone's brainwashed at that point. I know, but it's just crazy that like you, you did all your own research. You went to the library for, for 40 months. Yeah. For 40 months. <laughs> and there's a guy outside of school like, anyone wants to join? Do some pull-ups, do some pull-ups. Yeah, yeah. Get a well, free t-shirt. <laughs> he's like, from you get a $10,000 check? Yeah. It, was, it was like 6th six, six to 10th grade. So 6th to 10th grade, yeah. I think like, that was just all of that. Sh yeah, and there were guys that were walking around and doing the junior, was it the ROTC, ROTC shit? Yeah, yeah, the junior yeah. military guys. And then I was like, that's so cool. But yeah, I didn't even go that route because at that point, I, I think also that's when I was also leaving religion. So everything that was like- um, Your worlds were like crumbling. <laughs> everything was yeah. scary. Cause everything was like, that's fake. Real, this is fake, fake. Yeah. this is fake, yeah. So that's kind of like, I think what people are going through with the woke shit, but like, they're just adults. Mm. But I went through that like in ninth grade. Damn dude, I just didn't want people to tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, why didn't you enlist? Uh, I, like Steve, I think um, during that time- Especially uh, coming from being an Eagle Scout, a lot of guys- Oh well, yeah, they, they joined the military. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Military. I feel like right when 9-11, Maybe happened. <laughs> yeah, we got you. We saw the video. <laughs> yeah, during that time uh, when 9 11 happened, I, I definitely remember that that was the most uh, patriotic that I felt, but at the same time, I was only 16. And then by the time I was like nearly 18, uh, you know, I, at the, we maybe were looking at things like I was definitely looking at things like JROTC and ROTC and stuff to kind of like look into it because it, it was close to things that I was familiar with, but I maybe just didn't have enough of a, a realistic urge to like go that far. When I had, um, I think, confusion as a senior in high school, not knowing what my purpose or career would be. I strongly entertained it as well. Mm. When I just didn't, uh, I don't know if it was like patriotism or just lack of understanding of what I would do. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you're just like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life. So then you're like, oh, well, if I go to this, then they're gonna give me this and this and this, or I'll definitely be able to get this. Or Super pretty, good option. Yeah, I'm pretty hey, sure I'm later. like not gonna be a loser there because like I'm very familiar with how to do certain things, yeah. blah, 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 blah. So it was like practical, so I definitely considered it. I definitely went to a, a recruitment place, a recruiter, and I like had some conversations, but just never ended up crossing the line. My like, sister was like this close to actually joining because it was gonna pay for her vet school. Oh, yeah. But then my grandparents ended up co-signing. And then also my sister, when she was there with the recruiter, they said that her titties were too big to fit in the air. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's, cr that's crazy. I was I was a recruiter for a period of time. <laughs> yeah, they tried they had to try it on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, oh, get the buttons to go. Can my, we try uh, another size? Yeah. My my uncle saw The buttons ricocheted and, and, and damaged the soldier. <laughs> <laughs> they got medical leave though, five thousand dollars a month. <laughs> for the rest of his life, yeah. <laughs> it was a good it, she doesn't need a bulletproof vest. Yeah. That shit bounces it back. <laughs> My uncle saw um, Pearl Harbor go down when he was a kid. Holy oh, yeah. shit. Was but he in the planes attacking them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was, the, what was the view? Is it like this? Dude, or is it like this? Here? Yeah. Anthony, where are you going, dude? Yeah. It was right there. I don't know. The guy saw it, he was like, ah, fuck. He said after yeah. school, so, so <laughs> they, they would all work on this watercress farm in Hawaii. So after school, they're like picking fucking whatever, doing some peasant ass shit, right? And then he just saw the planes like crashing down and oh he was God. like, what the fuck? And then, um, you know, military is one of the ways where like broke kids could see the world. So he was oh, like, yeah. oh, I want to travel. So, and he goes, you know, you meet so many people that are on base in Hawaii that come from all over. And he's like, oh yeah, I want to go visit different places. So that's like one of the reasons why. And I was thinking, yeah, I think the military though, like the way I went into it was so cynical and like the mentality of like, 
wow, this is such a scary thing that people can use you for a certain thing. But I still think it's a good thing for poor working class or even people that are in broken homes to like get into a system that can help you discipline yourself and build character because it's designed to get like a straight up jungle man with no education into becoming a part of an organized group. So I was like, at the end of the day, it's up to you what you do after boot camp and I mean, leaving the program. It's like, yeah. Would you say like the military, it's for jungle men? <laughs> <laughs> no, the military, making jungle men into civilized men. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> it's for Jungle Man. Is that, is that why uh, you didn't want to do it? Well, I think at the time... Jungle Man? You didn't want to become a civilized man? No, at the time, I think um, the sentiment of the military in the Middle East was like, not good. Like, by public opinion, everybody was like, oh, they're, they're like killing people, they're like, you know... By that time, we'd never found the weapons of mass destruction yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We like, bombed like three countries. Was, or like, uh, yeah. That's true, because by the time we, we, yeah. we were like, we saw 9-11 and everyone was like, I'm joining. Yeah. By the time it was Nick's generation, it was like, wait, what are we doing there? Yeah, it was like, oh, let's oh, pull out. We're still looking for If that. you read the David K. report, don't worry, the government investigated themselves. They found that Iraq was in possession of some things they shouldn't have had it too, though. Don't worry about it. Oil? <laughs> it all checked out. Long range yeah. missiles, for example. So like, I think that was a sentiment at the time. And then I remember a lot of it was like anecdotal too. It was like some of my sister's friends had joined the military and they would come back and they would tell stories about like their time overseas in Iraq. And it was just like pretty rough stories or just who knows how true they were at the time. Cause this guy was a little kind of crazy. The guy that was like telling us these stories in retrospect, like years looking back, but he just was like, yeah, he just had a lot of bad things to say about like the military, oh, I wouldn't do it again, blah, blah, blah. So at the time, I, recruiter. yeah, but I, think, but I wasn't necessarily like really ever into thinking about joining the military. Cause I think growing up, my uncles and like my dad would always be like, yeah, it's fucking a load of shit. You know, they're, oh, really? they're kind of like, they're kind of like that. Like, don't even waste your time. They're just going to use you. They just want you to fucking fight other people's wars. Like that's how they would talk about it in the military. So me growing up, I just was like, well, I'm just not going to do that. Like. I didn't really have an interest in it. I didn't really, I was kind of neutral about it either way, but I never had a feeling of like, I'm gonna join the military. But in retrospect, a couple years later, I think it probably would have been a good thing for me if yeah. I joined the military. Like honestly, like in going through that boot camp, I think it would have given me a lot of structure. But you know. Do you think you wouldn't have been 15 minutes late today if you joined yeah. the military? I think my bed would have been made. I think my boots would have been cleaned. Uh, yeah, military doesn't <laughs> matter because Bart didn't read the call sheet. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta, you gotta send it to me to like smoke signals or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We gotta, we gotta walk you in. What about you, Ryan? I, uh, Ryan? The funny thing is that I really wanted to very badly. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But uh, three things that ruined it. One was that- Three, two people died and the other one. <laughs> my recruiter died as he was telling me. <laughs> one I lost my paperwork. <laughs> he got circumcised during boot camp time. <laughs> I wanted to join, but then um, what happened is, for, uh, firstly, I was more <clears throat> concerned about being rebellious against my parents, and that's what they wanted me to do. Mm. So I didn't want to do They it. wanted you to go to the military? Yeah, my dad really wanted me to join the Marines. He would Wait. always like tell me that. As an infantry? Because in our religion, everyone became a medic. Interesting. Oh. Yeah, because oh, yeah. it's more of a caretaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they were like, if there's ever a draft, or if there's any type of... Um, you know, military work that you have to sign up for. They're like passive. passive go into passive go into duty. medic. Don't be a don't don't uh, don't contribute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that means you. That, that's like being the radio operator guy, dude. You're on the front fucking lines. I guess it's better and more. Yeah. Sin free. They didn't really care oh. about that. They were just Hacksaw like, Ridge. Don't pick up a gun. My dad would just like always remind me about that, like as I was growing up. But then one, once I got to my rebellious stage, I just didn't want to do anything they wanted me to do. So then, like even though I wanted to join, I didn't oh. want to because it, rebellion took precedence. Mm. So I was like, I'm not doing that. And then the second thing was, uh, there was a, a recruiter who came to the high school. Uh, he had went. He graduated from my high school and he came back to talk oh. to the kids about it. And he just did such a bad job. He just like he just seemed like a boring person, first of all. So then like once you don't win as a 
as a charisma person, then you just, it's a hard sell. Yeah. And then he started saying like what it was like for him in the Marines. And he's like, yeah, I did a lot of training. What we do is we, uh, we go into the water and then we, we test and, and we, uh, you have specific amount of seconds to inflict pain on your partner as you're underwater. And he just kept saying that. And we were like, what? that doesn't sound fun, man. He's like, the food's pretty shit. Oh, well, sometimes the chicken's okay. He was just so boring. And he just kept saying this like water training thing over and over. And we're just like, dude, that sucks. And then like, nobody was into it. What a shitty recruit. Yeah, he, he really, that was a big part of it. And then the third part was that somehow, I don't know how this happened, but I got it in my head that if you did poorly academically, then you would never make it in the military. Mm. Oh, well, you couldn't just join and get like a rank or like um, be a... Um an officer. Because like the way that our school and the teachers would make you feel about your grades is that like that affected everything in your life. Oh. So then like we all thought, and it wasn't just me, but we were like, oh dude, like I didn't, I got a C in, in geometry. I'm probably going to suck at the military. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like we just equated yeah. like your uh, academic proficiency with how good you'd be at anything. So we were like, oh dude, I'll die the first day. <laughs> and I remember telling my dad that. My dad was like, why don't you just go? And I'm like, dude. I was like, I'll probably be killed my first day there. My dad's like, no, you're not. You're not even going to die. You're not going to use geometry over there. <laughs> yeah. He was trying to like tell me all those things that they're not connected. You're not use geometry over there. But then I think that's the backfire of like your parents and your family and your church and your friends and everybody telling you your whole life that like, hey, whatever happens to you in school with your grades is going to affect your whole life. So yeah. then I just thought they were linked. Oh, that's like the so biggest like, lie that fucking sucks. It's the ass. biggest yeah. lie. Yeah. And it discourages everything. So I was like. Why did I think that? Was Why did I go to school? <laughs> what made you yeah. join Bart? Um, I feel like like I, the 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 way like Ryan worded it almost feels like um, majority of people want to join. And then so what, what was the reason why you did it? Why you didn't? Why you didn't? But I felt like the consensus was the other way. Like most people went to college, and then so for me, um, I messed up so much in like my academic career that I was like I. Definitely don't have the tools to do well in college. Mm. I got kicked out of like four schools and all. I spent five years in high school, you know. So I'm like st studying and reading and stuff. It's definitely not for me. Um, and then I also, I think like my dad has always held like the military in a high regard. Like he, he not in a way of like like a doctor, but he always felt like um, the way he said it was like this is like how like a rite of passage to like. Like uh, have discipline and and kind of be your own man type of deal, and then so I was like that started like simmering in my brain. I think like junior year when I started to realize like everyone started to take SATs and stuff, people were getting their scores back. There's like applying to college, and I already kind of skipped that whole process. And I'm like I'm not really doing any of that stuff. And I was like maybe I'll go talk to some recruiters, and um, I went to like the the army recruiter didn't really vibe with them that much. Went to the navy recruiter didn't really vibe with him that much and then I went to the marine recruiting office in Montebello I was actually set on joining the army but then I was like oh, these two guys are kind of whack they kind of felt like used car salesmen like all slimy and shit like hey you wanna you wanna see the world or whatever I'm like don't talk to me like that. you jump out of helicopter and see the world <laughs> yeah and I'm like that's weird and I go to the the marine office I'm like hello anybody in here and then this guy like crawls up from underneath the desk he's like oh you're here to join the marines I was like Dude, this is my place. And that's not a used car salesman? I was yeah. like, this motherfucker don't give a fuck. Yeah. He reminds me of me. And then I try to talk to him and he just seems so fucking Wow. Yeah, that's like funny because that's the hardest branch in the military by far. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't he, he just He's like the most undisciplined one. Yeah. But I liked it because he just didn't like give a fuck. Like everyone else was like so fucking hard. pressed and <laughs> shit. Like perfect <laughs> everything that you're like like, I th I think this guy, like, takes his job for way more than what it is. Like, all you're trying to do is sign up kids. Yeah. That's your real job, right? And then this guy, like, like, like this guy's a nerd. Yeah. Yeah. A hero is trying to save the future of this country. That's kind of tight. Yeah, and then this guy gets up. and doesn't give, <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> and then he almost kind of gives me this vibe of, like, okay, wrap that up, because I got to go coach wrestling <laughs> soon. I was like, oh, can, can I come back tomorrow? I got more questions. He goes, all right. So I was like, Sick that's a salesman right there. Yeah, yeah it almost yeah, like yeah, hurry yeah, yeah, up. You got him. Boss going in, he's kicking but it. But in man. your in your experience, <laughs> you played hard to get. In your experience, <laughs> being in the Marines, right? And yeah. then like, do you know everyone's past story and like why they joined and like what type of people joined? Oh yeah, all different. It's crazy. Like yeah. when you, so the minute you hit boot camp, at least in the Marine Corps, uh, west of the Mississippi, they all go to. 
uh, MCRD San Diego and then Camp Pendleton, everyone else goes to Paris Island. So I only meet people that are from like Texas, Oklahoma, whatever, everyone that's uh, west of the Mississippi. And there's people where they come from military towns. It's like, that's like being a doctor in their town. There's broken families, broken homes. There's ones where uh, the whole family is like military and they're just trying to carry on the tradition. There's people that are like, I literally don't know what to do. Like there's people that you see like, when you first join in the platoon, it was like 90 people. And then within the first week or two, it goes down to 70. Hmm. What do you like, mean, they get weeded out? Yeah, they just get weeded out. Uh, in boot camp? In boot camp. Oh, yeah. and immediately, because some there's people that are just like, oh fuck, I signed up for the wrong shit. You can well, leave like that? Or you get medically discharged, or like oh, people's shit. bones break. There's like, or people, uh, recruiter's not doing a good job. Like the recruiter's supposed to set you up, so like the minute you sign up, and until you finish your senior year in high school, you're supposed to set up all these events that you can go exercise and train. So like, I think like, I don't know what the bare minimum pull-ups is, but they're supposed to get you to do the bare minimum pull-ups so that when you come into boot camp, Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you don't die. Mm. Then there's people, so the first day that you go in, there is a physical fitness test, and then there's like a ton of people that just died, and you're like, oh shit, your recruiter did not do their job preparing you. And then so like a bunch of people get weeded out, and then you start connecting, and then, yeah, there's people from all walks of life. There's guys that are like 30, there's guys that are like 17, super young, um, super like, super jocks that were like, could have went D1 in high school or college. Like you just, the whole the whole gamut, yeah. If there was a draft, would you guys dodge it? Absolutely. Today, absolutely. But like, what's the tr what's the real war? What's the fight? And what would we do at our age? It's like, if aliens came down, every fucking nation had to pull together, it's oh, like, yeah. I don't know about dodging. It's like, I'd yeah, let's go. Aliens. Yeah, let's fucking fight well, I'd, that. I'd also kind of think they're tight, so I'd have a, it'd be a tough time. Yeah, it'd be a tough one. <laughs> as long yeah, as we're tight. in Bart's platoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we could be together, that'd be tight. If aliens were trying to war on us, though, I'd be like, that's fucked <laughs> if up. If aliens are trying to war. Yeah, like, don't try to war on us, man. Don't try to war on us. I really like the idea of, like, if that recruiter that talked to you could just read you as a person so well, he sees you walking up, he's like, oh. That's hey, funny. what's up? Hey, come here, kid. Okay. <laughs> I got wrestling practice. He's in like 15. an expert person reader. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, yeah. oh, oh, those guys, they look like they already want to join. <laughs> oh, what's up? Yeah, play hard to get. Hard to get mode. <laughs> I, uh, I heard that I heard that rumor or whatever, or maybe it's not a rumor, maybe it's true, that um, you could only be an Air Force pilot if you had like 20-20 vision. And at that time, I had I was in the. I think you need club. to be. I think you need to be better. Yeah, I was I was I was in the Four Eyes Club and I had glasses, so it just shattered my dream. So I genuinely was like, I'm, I'll never. There were a lot of rumors like that. Oh yeah, another reason. But that's I a real rumor feet. though. That's real though. That, yeah. That's real. You have to have better than 2020. It'd be 2010, 2015. But at the time, they didn't come out with the shit called LASIK, so I just my green my dreams was are crushed. Asthma, you know. What was I mean? asthma a thing too? Like if you have asthma, you can't do it. Uh yeah, I mean, but everyone lies on shit. Like the, the recruiter will almost help you lie. Like I remember like oh, he's like oh uh, did you like. Like ever smoke any weed or do any drugs? And I was like, what am I supposed to say? And they're like, I would just say like you didn't touch the other stuff. So I'll, don't say I did ecstasy. Like, I never even heard that. And I'm like, oh okay, I never did ecstasy. And they're like, what about weed? I'm like, uh, I did. What he goes, oh, you probably experimented, right? And I was like, yeah, I experimented maybe like 40, 55 times. <laughs> he goes, no, just, you just say like once or twice. You're all trying to fill out the form. Like, there's no field for the amount that I did. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll help you out, you know. Yeah. That's because a lot of these guys. Like, I didn't do them. I sold them. Is that? Like a lot of them, they know they're trying to help this guy get to a better life. Right, yeah. right. So they're right, almost right, like, right. don't rat yourself out. Like, here's yeah, your chance, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, That's recruitment's at like an all time low right now. Right now, yeah. All time low. Yeah. But it's not just lower. the states, it's happening to other countries too. Yeah. Yeah, Dude, I can see that. Bro. Which uh, interracial marriages are most prominent? <laughs> in the military. <laughs> in the military. Chinese and Zimbabweans. <laughs> there it is.